Welcome to the Grok Shop and part six in my series on compost tea. In this video, I'll be doing a preloaded fungal tea, and by preloaded, what I mean is to grow out mycelium in the compost before starting the brew process. So situations where you might want to do a fungal tea over a standard or bacterial tea uh, would be when you're going to apply the tea to trees or perhaps if you have a particular pathogen in your soil that you're trying to fight. So to preload or pre-feed the bacteria in the compost we need to provide a food source. In this case I'm using oatmeal which I'm grinding up in a coffee grinder. You could use pretty much any grain, bran, wheat, barley, so with the food prepared, it's pretty much just a matter of mixing the food into the compost, uh, which is what I'm gonna do here. And I'm gonna just layer it in, then I'll shake it up and, uh, and I'll put a little, little bit of uh, oatmeal dust on the top. In addition to the oatmeal food for the fungus, I'm gonna add some blackstrap molasses uh, just a couple ounces added to some water and mixed up. You want to make that compost nice and moist. Of course, you want to use only dechlorinated water. Be sure to check my video in this series if you need to know how to do that. Notice I'm using canning jars or mason jars. You don't have to use that. Um, I use it just because I like to see what's going on below the surface. Um, but actually it, it might even be better to use a pan or something with a larger surface area because uh, you'll, you'll typically get more mycelium growing on the surface. But either way, uh, it needs to be exposed to air, so I just put some paper towel on top. Then you want to place it in a nice warm, dark area. I put it in a cabinet above my fridge. After about four or five days, you'll have a nice white fuzzy beard on top of your compost and you're ready to go. For this brew, I'll be using some Neptune's Harvest, which is an organic fish hydrolysate. It also contains some kelp meal as well. I'll be using some trace minerals, bat guano, and of course our white fuzzy bearded compost. Now instead of the fish hydrolysate, you could use blackstrap molasses. It's been shown to be just as effective. However, the fish hydrolysate is a better fertilizer for your soil, but it's significantly more expensive. What I've been doing lately is rotating uh, the fish hydrolysate in about every two to three weeks, and then the other weeks I'm just using blackstrap molasses. If you're in a dry climate, you might find your compost is a bit crusty like this here is. Um, probably would have been better for me to add a little water in the middle of the process because you really want to try to keep that compost uh, as moist as possible. Okay, next I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of trace minerals. I'm using volcanic rock dust. Um, there's other kinds of rock dust you can get. Or if you've got the time and inclination, you can go outside and bust up your own rocks and make a real fine dust out of it. It takes a lot of busting for that, I'm afraid. <laughs> but supposedly the rock dust helps provide a foothold for the fungal hyphae to latch onto. Lastly, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of Bat guano is strictly optional for a fertilizer. You can add it at the end of the brew if you want, or you could just leave it out altogether. It's really not needed for growing out fungal hyphae. Nice head of foam on this one. Just go ahead and uh, scrape all that extra residue off and throw it back into the compost heap. Now collect a little sample for the microscope assay. Does not apply if you don't have a microscope. Time to check the scope out. 
looks like we got a little flagellate here or flagellate however you like to say it and some bacteria swimming along with him nice serene strand of sausage link bacteria floating along here So for those of you who may not know, some bacteria is motile or it can move on its own power and other bacteria is non-motile. And uh, here we have some very much motile bacteria. You ever get that feeling you're just going in circles? A nice flagellated protozoa here. So you may have heard of the face on Mars. How about the face on protozoa? Fast moving critter here is uh, ciliate, possibly uh, paramecium. Uh, these things can get up to be uh, 300 micrometers or so, um, almost a third of a millimeter. You can almost see them with your eye, the big ones. Uh, this one's a mystery to me. Looks kind of like an amoeba. Not totally sure. Could just be a bubble of some sort. Oh, we have membrane bustage. It is busted open, folks. Be free, be free. Speaking of amoeba, looks like we have a naked amoeba here caught in a current just floating along. Let's see where he's headed. Where's he going? Whoop! Right off the edge of the slide. Oh! And we finally see some fungal hyphae here. And uh, I guess a little flagella here uh, on a feeding frenzy. Hey, work that thing, man. Working his. One flagella in the back to move around and uh, one flagella in the front scooping up bacteria as fast as he can. This is pretty much exactly what you want to see. A lot of flagellates feeding uh, at breakneck pace on bacteria as fast as they can eat. There's a big fat ciliate. Look at them hairs. He's just working it, working the currents, directing that bacteria towards his feeding hole, and uh, living living the good life for now, anyway. <laughs> I right, got some nice binary fission going on here. Cell division, mitosis, all these type things happening. See a little more fungal hyphae here attached to some organic matter. Well, now this is interesting. Kind of reminds me of a song. Y'all get that, right? Eh, if you didn't get it, you might be drifting. More fungal hypha.
in here looks like we've got a little bit of hot potato going on This one's kind of new. Um, got kind of a uh, swimming bucket going on here. Anybody have an idea on this one? Let me know. And finally, we see a little more fungal hyphae. Didn't see quite as much fungal hyphae as I hoped for, but I guess all in all it turned out alright. That's how it's done. Thanks for watching.